In this chapter segments video, I want to show you how to use uh, client-side scripting to create functionality within your pages. And by client-side scripting, that would refer to the actual programming executing on the visitor's browser as opposed to server-side scripting where the script executes at the server and then a full page is passed back to the browser or in the case of Ajax a partial page rendering based on server-side uh, uh, architecture. So what we're going to do is we'll start with the built-in features in Expression Web for layers and behaviors and it's a really fast way to be able to build some interesting JavaScript uh, effects. So without further ado, let's get started. All right, getting started with Chapter 7. Pop the page open. The first thing I'd like to do is because I always get a lot of um, questions about this segment of creating this using layers and behaviors. Let's do this. Come down. We need a new div. So we'll just take that paragraph tag and we'll do edit tag. And we'll turn it from a P to a div. The next thing we want to do is new style. We're going to apply it to the document selection, which is the div. We're going to call it controls. We're going to give it a background color. This is an ugly color, but it's just to prove a point. 5 AAC 6 5. And that's like a, an iridescent green. We're going to go down to the position category and we're going to give it a width of 300 pixels and a height of 270. And then what we'll do is OK this box and you can see the change occurs in the design pane as well as the code pane. Next, we'll do insert interactive button. And then we're going to scroll down. And you can use any of these. There's tons and tons of them. But in the book, we used soft tab one. As you can tell, there are quite a few. Soft tab one. And the first button text will do text and insert it. Now, without moving our cursor, we're going to do it again. Insert, interactive button, soft tab one, the next one, flash. And then one more time. Windows Media. Oh. Let's go, as you can see, it's bend, uh, it has uh, line wrap. So let's see what we can find here that's caused this line wrap. I see it. That's the space that it, uh, Expression Web applied. Uh, it does that because sometimes an empty element won't display to a browser. So even if it has the NBSP, a non-breaking space, that's enough to make it show up in any browser. So now that we've finished this, and we have our three interactive buttons, the next step is going to be to add a viewer down here and wire up some uh, client-side script using the layers and behaviors. So we'll pull up our behaviors panel and the layers panel. And they'll appear right here. So behaviors and layers. So that's the next step. We'll drop a layer in and start to apply behaviors. Let's break now and then we'll come back. So we'll, what we'll do next is drop in our layer. We'll set the cursor or insertion point inside of this presentation div and on the layers uh, panel we will click insert layer. First thing we're going to do is rename by modifying the ID. And I want to call this player. Next thing we'll do is borders and shading. I want to go to shading and I want to ensure that the background color will be white. You can 
can see in the UI turned white. I'm going to go back one more time. to position and we want to go to 40 wide by 180 high and that fills up that space nicely. Next thing is Please select the viewing option by clicking one of the buttons above. And what we'll do next is use the behaviors uh, panel to dynamically change what the content of this div is. So what we'll do is we'll break here, we'll come back and set our um, behaviors, and we'll take it from there. Before we begin adding uh, behaviors, what I'd like to do is save this file. And when you do, it'll want to save all of these buttons. These are the different states of the interactive buttons that we used. And it's fine. We'll save them in the Images folder and click OK. And the page saves. The asterisk is removed. And we can begin. Next step, we're going to dynamically change the content of this layer. And what we want is the text. And I've put a text file in here, text.txt. So control A, control C, and then close it. So before we do that, we're going to select the text button and we're going to do set text. Okay, here's a little trick. Sometimes when you see only on set text, you don't have set text of frame, layer, or text field, and you only have status bar. What it means is during the styling operation that we did on this, a, a little tiny piece of code got moved. So here's how we'll fix it. We'll go style, position, absolute. Now, if you're in the habit of writing your own CSS, you're going to want to do that. Don't do that. We don't end it with a semicolon. By having this style in here, it actually makes this div available to this uh, behavior manager. So let's go back, set text, set text of layer, and it should open up for us. Oh, you know what? Let's close this out. Let's grab that text button just to make sure. Insert, set text, set text of layer. This is uh, the layer div player, the one that we had to kind of bootstrap that position in. And that's it. This is the code that was in this text file. So we'll click OK. Next step, we have the flash button. So we're going to go into this files folder and we're going to look for the flash code. Flash example.txt, same thing. Control A, Control C, and then close it. Click this interactive button, insert set text of layer and then click OK. Next one is the Windows Media and we need Windows Media example.txt Control A, Control C, close the file. While the Windows Media button is selected, set text, set text of layer, paste it in and then click OK. We're going to save this And now for the moment of truth, throw it to the browser. And let me drag it into the viewport. Open it up and see if it works. There we go. There's the text marked up as we asked with the divs and so on. Here's flash. It's playing that flash file. This piece of video is Great. coming off of the camera and going directly to the Now we'll do Windows Media and that auto plays and we should see, okay, there we go, so running we Windows Media. So let's just go back to the text. And there you have it. 
just a few clicks and what's inherently built into Expression Web, and you were able to make a multi-format uh, viewer. And the neat thing is, until the user clicks on one of these buttons in the browser, that text is not, or not the text itself, but the actual uh, file object, being the Flash or the Windows Media, doesn't get passed to the browser. So you're not loading the visitor with tons and tons of file if all they want to see is text. You don't hit them with either of these two heavy files unless they specifically click it and ask for it. So there you go. Keep in mind, this behavior's uh, pain in conjunction with the layer's pain, you can do so many things. Redirects, open new windows, play sounds, pop-up messages, preload images. Just the combination of things that you can do with the layers and the behaviors pane in concert with each other is just fantastic. So almost anything you could think of, you can do. Will it be the most perfect uh, JavaScript code? It will not. But will it work across browsers? Yes, it will. So you take what you can get. And I think it's pretty neat that you can do that without writing any code at all. Okay, so the next item we want to tackle is inserting a data view into an HTML page. And basically what it'll do is it'll take the content from an XML file and insert it into the page. Even if it's an HTML page, you don't need server-side uh, capability. So we'll add a paragraph here. We can go back to this um, insert data view. And if the file isn't in the, in the uh, website, we can click Browse, come up to the files that came with the book, and bring in feed.xml. I've already brought it in once before, so I'll just click Yes. And then we'll come up to here and show data. I want to pick the title, the link, and the description. And then in the select, insert selected fields as, we'll do single item view. And it inserts them. Next, we'll grab that because it's not really all that attractive. And we'll do insert selected field as, formatted, and then choose hyperlink. In the link box, we'll put um, Expression Studio Profile, and then click OK. Next item, let's center this a little bit so you can see it better. On the next item, what we'll do is tab through to create a new row right click after highlighting them both modify and then merge cells now here's where the real work begins we've got our our insertion point set there we're going to come down and we're going to grab title link and oh no that's not that's the image let's come down here title description and pub date. We're going to insert that as subview. Now you can see here we have the title, which is I replied to blah 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 here. Here's a description along with a link, which we're going to deal with later, and then a pub date. So let's just save the page. And when we do, you'll see that it wants to save two files xslview.javascript.js and feed.xsl. So we'll say yes to both. And it'll create these files that you see here. Let's preview this page. Let's make sure that we're focused on 7 and click Preview. Let me drag it over into the viewport. Open it up so we can see it. And there it is. If I click this, it should redirect the browser to Community Profile. So that worked. I don't feel like going through this, neither should you. And let's go back to it. Now, what I see here is a lot of HTML code that's exposed to the browser, some formatting that's probably not the best, and um, we're going to clean this up. In order to do that, we're going to use a combination of this data view uh, library 
and a raw edit of this file here, feed.xsl. And that stands for Extensible Style Transformation Language. It's basically CSS for a feed like this. So let's pause it here. We'll come back and we'll manipulate this um, multiple, uh, multiple item subview. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do to make this a little more appealing is since we don't need the title and the description, and the description contains reply to the question and then it has a link, we don't need this, and this is a little bit sub ideal. So, what we'll do, set our cursor in the, or set our insertion point in here, look for this little arrow, and then do edit columns. I want to remove the title. And I'd rather have the pub date before the description. So we'll grab pub date and we'll move it up and then click OK. The feedback is instant and it's not too bad. Um, we could just call that date and we could capital D description. The problem that I have with it is this HTML shows. This is a function of how the software tries to protect the browser. And so to change this, what we're going to have to do is open this file here. And we're going to come down to about line 138. Now in the book, I show how to find it and we just use a find. Um, if I can't find it, we're going to have to use that same method. I'm not seeing it. You know what? Since we made a change to this page, it automatically changed that. Let's save everything. And let's come back. Now this is what I was looking for. All this uh, XSL parameters. So we want to come down to here and we're looking for XSL value of. So we want XSL value of select description. So that's what we're looking for. Let's make it fast. Fine. Description. Find all. That's what I was looking for. And then what we'll do is disable output escaping. Yes. We'll save this. We'll come back to here and then preview it. Oop, got the wrong one. So we'll go back. We'll find the next one. That one, XSL value of select description. Try it again. Disable output escaping. Yes. Save it. And when there's multiple entries, sometimes you'll catch the wrong one first. We're actually previewing the XSL file. Let's close that out. Focus on Chapter 7. And then view it. And hopefully we'll caught it. There we go. And no longer is it HTML raw on the face of the page. We actually have the link to the incident and the link to the, the forum that the reply happened in. And there's so much stuff that we can do in that XSL file, such as um, change the order that these appear in and so on and so forth. But what I wanted to show you is from just a few clicks in the UI in Expression Web and one relatively easy edit, um, you've got this. And then so anytime this file here changes, that change will be reflected 
in the visual presentation of this content to the browser. And the upside is, as that feed changes, you can just add another file to it and overwrite this file, and the changes will automatically appear on the website. So there is the second case of using client-side scripting and in a much more complex way than with the layers and behaviors. And uh, there you go. I hope you enjoy that.